Uh, this tutorial is about uh, creating a, an Illustrator document setter for a small project and um, pre-flighting the project and outputting it for print. So um, I'm going to make a new document. Um, I have Illustrator CC 2017 here. So I'm going to go to new and I'm going to choose print and then I'll start off with A4. Um, this all depends on your project but for me A4 will work. I'll set my units to millimeters. Um, I could put in the number of artboards here, um, but I'm going to actually add them one at a time just because I prefer to work that way. Um, what else do I need? I'm going to go to my bleed settings and set those to three. I'm just going to keep that at a standard value and then create. Okay, so now I have an A4 portrait document and I'm going to switch to my artboard tool. And in here I'm going to give my document or at least my artboard a name. So up at the top I'm going to call this research. So this will be my artboard where I actually will put together some research for my client to explain to them some of my design decisions and so on. Um, then part of this project is going to involve a logo design. So I need a separate artboard for that. So on my control panel at the top here I'm going to click on the new artboard button and I'm going to then move across and click to create a new artboard and that artboard I'm going to make 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Um, I'll position it neatly and then I'll give it the name logo. Okay then I'm required to create a business card so I'm gonna do that down at the bottom here so new artboard and then I'm going to enter the value now the standard business card is 90 by 50 millimeters I'm gonna make my artboard bigger so that I can put in um, crop marks for my business card so I'm gonna make the artboard 121 millimeters by 85 okay and then I'm gonna nest that in here and I'm gonna call this business card then I need to take that business card and I need to lay it out 8 up on an A4 sheet for my printer. So another artboard and this time I'm just going to choose A4 and then just drag it into position. I want it not to be landscape, I want it to be portrait. So position that there and I'll just call this business card 8 up. Okay, I'll zoom out a bit and then finally I need an artboard for a menu because this is actually a, a restaurant that I'm doing a little design project for. So we've got logo, business card, business cards 8 up, research and then finally menu. Um, in fact it's not really a menu, it's like a little special flyer. So new artboard and I'm going to set that to 100 by 210. And put that there and call this um, special okay so those are my five artboards and this is a good time for me to save so I'll just go to my desktop I'll make a new folder and I'll just call it um, restaurant project and I'll save this as designs. Right. Okay, so um, the first thing that I wanted to cover is the setting up of business cards. So I'm going to go to my artboard panel uh, here and I'm going to double click on the business card artboard. So the standard size for a business card, of course you can make a business card any size you want, but really the standard size is 90 by 50. So I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to actually input exactly those values, 90 by 50. And then I'm going to center that on this artboard through my align panel and I'm going to align to artboard and center. center. And from here 
I'm going to create a, f a bleed but of course my bleed is already on the artboard but I am not going to create a business card the exact size of the artboard I'm going to make it smaller so I need to make my own bleed here so with this rectangle selected I'm going to copy and then paste in place and then I'm going to go to object path offset path and I'm going to set a two millimeter offset and I'm going to change the color of that to red and half a point so that's my bleed now I'm going to set my crop mark so I'm going to select this inside rectangle which is the exact size of the business card I'm going to remove the stroke and I'm going to go to object and create trim marks and that then takes that rectangle and it creates the trim marks now these trim marks are way too big I don't know why Adobe insists on making such giant trim marks so I'm gonna double click to isolate them and just bring them smaller just so that they'll fit more comfortably on an A4 sheet when I do them eight up so I'm just moving them in a bit and I'm also going to make them a bit shorter okay last one okay and there's my business card so the actual design of the business card will be um, inside the crop marks here and there's the bleed so from here that will be the size of the business card so I'm just gonna fill that with gray just to show us where the actual business card will go so when I want to now put this business card 8 up on an A4 it, you, I could just copy it across and then duplicate it but for me an easier way is to select the whole business card and to make it a symbol by dragging it into the symbols panel and giving it a name so I'm just gonna call it business card and then I'm going to switch to my 8-up artboard and I'm going to drag that on and then I'm just going to alt drag to duplicate that so that I get 8 so now I have 8 business cards on an A4 sheet now the beauty with this is because they're symbols I can go back to the original and edit it so any changes I make so let me just do something like put in a red circle any changes I make will be wired through to the symbols on the other page so if you find right at the end you've made a mistake or a spelling mistake all you do is correct the original or in fact any one of these and the rest will update so it's a pretty efficient way of working okay so I'm going to switch to a completed document it's not exactly the same as this in terms of artboard layout mm -hmm. but um, it's similar so I have it open here and it is um, basically the same thing it's an A4 research document it's a logo design for a sushi restaurant it's a business card design it's the business card 8 up and it's a flyer so it's basically uh, similar to uh, to this layout here um, so I want to go through the things that you need to check when a doc when, when your project is finished so that uh, it's ready for the printer so the first thing to do is to check your colors now I've deliberately kind of messed this up a little bit so it needs fixing so the way that you do that is you go to window and then you go to separations preview and then you look and see if you have any colors besides your standard process colors so for litho printing it's going to be cyan magenta yellow and black so you can see here I have two additional colors this pink and blue which kind of look like magenta and cyan but they're not they actually are spot colors so I'm gonna hide my CMYK colors to see where these ones come from and I can see that um, they are um, over here the special is 99 Rand and then the cyan is a, a tinted or it's an, a, an opaque cyan over here so I need to change those so I'm gonna go to my swatches panel 
and I can see my spot colors because they have the little white triangle in the corner with a dot in it. So I'm going to double click on the pink spot color and I'm going to change it to process and CMYK and press OK and you can see there it disappears from um, the separations preview. I'm going to do the same with the blue, change it to process and CMYK and then OK. So now my colors are done. I've only got process colors. Of course if you want to work with, pro with spot colors then you need to know what you're doing and you need to make sure you manage that properly. But here this is a process color job so I've got four colors. So that's the first part of pre-flighting. Okay so the next part of pre-flighting is looking at transparency um, and the way that you do that is you go to window and flatten a preview. So here's my flatten a preview. I can make it bigger if I want to and then press refresh. And then here I have um, a choice to highlight things. I'm going to highlight transparent objects to begin with. And you can see that on my final artboard, the flyer, I actually have some transparency represented by this kind of pinky red color. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having transparency. And if you look on the picture, you can see that there's this faded logo behind everything. That's fine. But really what matters is how is this going to affect my text. So I'm going to say all affected objects and I can see now that the text here, some of it is highlighted in red which means that when this uh, job goes to the printer that the transparency of this logo is going to result in rasterization of some of the text. In other words the text will be turned into an image along with this uh, transparent background and that's not a good thing. You don't want your text as raster images, you want it as vector. So we need to adjust things here. And the way that you do that is by arranging your layers. So I'm going to close that and I'm just going to uh, make a few changes first because you can see that in this uh, design I've used symbols quite extensively. So I'm going to click on break link for my symbols so that they just become artwork again for every single one of these so that it's, they are no longer symbols. The, the symbol uh, method was just for convenience during editing in this project. And one more. Okay, so now I have no symbols and I'm also just going to select everything and make sure that nothing is grouped just so that if I need to separate things out into layers I can do that. Okay, that should be okay. Alright, so now the first thing I need to do is go and look at my layers. And I've just got one layer with a whole lot of stuff in it, which, which is not very organized. So I'm going to call that first layer background. And add another layer above that. And I'm going to call that graphics. And then one more layer above that text. Now there's a reason why I always put the text layer at the top and that's because if your text is above everything else it doesn't matter if you use transparency your text will never be rasterized and that's the whole point here. So I'm going to go to select object all text objects and move so this little box here represents what's selected I'm going to move that box up to the text layer. So if I hide the text layer I should have no more text so that's one step. Um, I think I also have another symbol here so I'm gonna break that link and also select text again. Uh, okay that needs to go up to text and that needs to go up to text. Okay so that's all my text taken care of. Then I need to look at um, graphics. So pretty much uh, all of this logo is graphics. So I'll select that all, I'll group it again and I'll move that up to the graphics layer. I'll also hide the graphics layer so, so I can see what I'm working with. Then here we've got the same logo again so I'll just select all of these and I'll move that up to the graphics layer. 
then these are backgrounds so those can stay in the background layer I don't really need to do anything with it then in the final artboard um, this here I'm going to just zoom in a little bit okay this little logo needs to be moved to the graphics layer uh, okay a bit difficult to select let's do that graphics this one and then here are these rugby posts made out of chopsticks and the little rugby ball needs to go up to graphics and so this is now the background and you can see that because I ungrouped everything it's lost its transparency so I need to put that back in again so I'm just going to select all of this group it oh that wasn't a good idea okay uh, and change the opacity to I believe it was 20 okay so now I've got my background and I'm also going to leave my crop marks in the black background as well and then I've got my graphics and then I've got my text okay um, yeah, there's a few things I would need to fix here like my rugby balls got a bit messed up but that's fine I'm not going to uh, dwell on that at the moment the point of this exercise is pre-flighting so now that I've got all my layers organized I'm going to go back and check my transparency now and flatten a preview refresh all affected objects if I now look here at the flyer you can see my text is no longer red so that means that it will not be rasterized and that's what I want now this seems like a lot of work and the reason why it is a lot of work here is because I did it right at the end what you ideally should do is as you're working you should make sure that whatever you're creating you create it in the correct layer and then you won't have to do this right at the end the next part of pre-flighting is something I'm just going to demonstrate here it's not really uh, something that I can show you with this particular project and that is um, expanding and flattening effects so when you're working in uh, Illustrator you will as you go along at times maybe apply effects to things so for example I've created this um, little circle and if I go to effect and uh, stylize and drop shadow and just add a drop shadow to that um, let's say that I draw um, a path and I apply a special kind of stroke to that path those are all effects and even transparency so for example um, if I create a circle and I just give it some transparency and maybe even well, let me just swap that around and maybe even overlap that with another circle and give it a different color and <clears throat> these are all things that you can do during your design process now you need to make sure that you know how is this going to translate when you send it to the printer and um, most printers will support this sort of effect but what you don't want is something to get lost in translation so it's always safer to break down your design to its basic paths and fills and strokes so for example this path here with a special kind of stroke on it instead of leaving it like that it's much better to go to object expand appearance and now it's actually just a shape made out of paths um, with this circle here it's much better to go to object either expand appearance or even rasterize you might want to actually turn it into an image to preserve exactly the way it looks um, if I choose expand appearance and then I go to ungroup you can see that what it actually has created is a raster shape and a, a, a raster shadow and a vector shape and if I take something like this which contains overlapping transparency and I go to object flatten transparency and I say OK and then I actually ungroup that you can see that it's now made shapes with different colors and these have zero or 100% opacity 
so there's no opacity here anymore even though it looks like it has opacity there is no opacity it's just color fills so it's just always good to bear in mind when you've used a lot of effects just make sure that afterwards you go and you use either expand expand appearance rasterize or flatten transparency um, this of course it, it should go without saying that you always save an editable version first before you do this so that if you want to go back and make some edits you haven't flattened all your effects and you can't go and tweak them okay so the next stage of pre-flighting is uh, not these days that necessary but um, it may be under certain circumstances and that is converting all your text to outlines or to paths now um, these days because uh, most jobs get supplied in the PDF format it's not really necessary to convert text to outlines but if you are worried about the translation of your fonts during the print process then it's probably a safe route to take so what that involves is selecting all your text so I'll go to all text objects and then right clicking and choosing create outlines what that does is it turns all your text into shapes or paths um, I generally don't do this anymore but if I'm worried about a, a particular font then I will convert it to outlines just in case so I'm going to undo that and then the last phase is um, packaging your project for archiving purposes before you output your PDF so um, what that means is just uh, putting your project your fonts and everything in one convenient place now obviously you want to package without having converted your text to outline so that you've still got live font uh, or at least live text so this stage you'd probably do and then convert to outlines if you if you had to do that so I'm just gonna go file package and I'll save and that's just a little uh, notice then I'm gonna set a destination so I'm gonna go to that folder on my desktop restaurant project and um, let me just call this uh, sushi project and yes I do want to copy links um, collect them in a separate folder yes relink yes copy fonts uh, create report mm, I'm not really it's not really necessary here so I'm gonna say package and uh, it's just got a font warning to make sure that I'm using licensed fonts I'll say OK and then OK and if I go to my desktop to that folder you'll see that there's a subfolder and inside there my fonts and my illustrator file if I had any linked images uh, that I was using those would also be copied into this packaged project folder okay and then the final phase is now outputting to PDF for the printer so um, I'm gonna go to file save as <clears throat> I will choose that same folder and instead of Illustrator I'm gonna choose um, Adobe PDF and from this dialog box you have a number of presets to choose from and um, the, the PDFX format is the one that you want to go with um, if you go for a PDFX 3 or 4 you need to check with your printer to make sure they support that I always recommend go with PDFX 1A 2001 uh, because that's kind of the the safest route to take every printer will be able to support that type of PDF because it breaks your document down into basically images and paths um, then what you want to do is not change anything once you choose the pre preset it's set up for you the only thing that you uh, can do is go to um, your marks and bleeds and you can choose some of these now be careful of just saying all mark all printers marks because sometimes printers get a bit ticked off if you go and do this because this is really their job so what I normally do is I just put trim marks on and I go down and say use document bleed settings and I leave the rest for the printer to put on themselves um, and then save PDF <coughs> and that will process and then I can go in and check my PDF here it is Okay, let's just bring this down to size so there's the cover with my crop marks 
here's the logo here's the business card with its own crop marks there's the business card eight up and there's the flyer and this is a print ready document so this is what you would send to the printer the package you would keep for yourself as an archive I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.